So today I'm going to show you the snowflakes that um, I was talking about the other night and all of these as you can see I've just really been playing with all the fancy stitches on my machine. I'm going to show you how to do it on the big machine. I'm on the um, horizon here, the 15,000 mainly because it's much easier for you to see what's going on on the screen so um, let's take it back because I've just pressed all the buttons haven't I there we go that's why right but I want to show you some of the settings that are on uh, this particular machine some of which you may have even if you've got a smaller machine you will still have things like memory lock stitch and possibly elongation and mirroring, um, all of which I've used for this little project here. So let's have a little look first. Because I'm doing snowflakes, what I have done, I have made myself some little templates and they're just literally circles, folded them into eights and then I've clipped out each one of those and made a hole in the middle so that it can I can use it with my friction pen. I don't know if hopefully you can see this. And I've just literally marked dots on here, which are going to be my kind of guidelines, if you like, because I'm going to start the stitching on the outside and then bring it into the center. And then once I've got these all ready, I've got sequins and um, things to put in the centers and just to bling them up a little bit. So let's get those out of the way and have a look at the stitches on here so if I just move you round slightly hopefully there's not too much shine on the screen what I want to look at is the memory setting and like I say whatever machine you've got if you've got some kind of stitch memory it might be a little button with an M on it um, it means that when we go into our fancy stitches so I'm going to go into the quilting ones here because there's lots and lots on here. It means that we can just save one stitch at a time. So this little button up here, um, and this is the button that you would have if you had something like the 9450, the 14,000, um, the Atelier 9 and 7, I think have all got this, this particular type of screen. This little button here, you can see there's three little hearts in a row and what it's doing is when I put in one of these fancy stitches I'm getting a whole row of stitches if I press that button and do the same it's just going to give me one and what it means is I can make my pattern up if you like so I can I can be a little bit more flexible with all these stitches and how to make the pattern as I say if you don't have this model if you're on an 8 200 or something like that you will have a memory button. So you press the stitch and then you press memory and it will remember just to do that one stitch. You may have used this on lettering, um, those kinds of things. So if I'm gonna delete that because I'm going to go through and look at, let's go onto this page. So something like a star followed by this, which is one of the most snowflakey stitches around probably. I press that, I'm only getting one of these feather stitches so press it again get another one I then I'm going to go page I'm going to scroll forwards because what I'm looking for is these are my bridging stitches and I'm going to just put in a couple of these I'm using the triple stitch here because it's a bit thicker so it's going to look a little bit more um, intense if you like once it's stitched out these bridging stitches will go through this again with another little project maybe but these bridging stitches are brilliant for taking you to where you need to be for the next stitch, if you like. Um, so you've got options of needle positions here and how many bridging stitches to do as well. And they're, they're normally just straight stitches. But like I say, we'll, we'll go into those a little bit more at some other point. But what I wanted to show you is if we go back to our original screen look you can see how many stitches and why I've got so many snowflakes already I'm going to have thousands by the end of this if I then go down here and put that same one in again 
if I wanted to do this as the whole arm going across my snowflake, obviously these are now facing the wrong direction. So what I can do for that, and I'm going to take it back so I'm under this particular stitch and it's showing up in red, is I can go down here to my mirroring button, okay? And I can do it side to side or um, front or backwards, if you like. So I'm going to do that. Can you see it's just turned it round? Not all stitches will offer you that option. On most of these machines, It will, it, if it can't do it, it won't come up so there you go so I'm going to go down again I'm going to do another one and again I'm going to turn that round oh I need to be actually under the stitch to turn it round there we go and then I can go along again and I can put back in another one of those so what I've got is a complete mirror image so something like this would be really helpful if you wanted to do um, labeling and you wanted to make some kind of uh, a little frame to go round your label it means that you can use these stitches when they've got a direction to turn it around so that they absolutely match for what you want to do okay I'm going to go back and take those out though because I'm just going to do literally one arm at a time because I did find that if I was doing right the way across you end up because I'm doing eight you end up with quite a big old lump in the middle and I want to sew um a sequin in there so I know if I've got a big lump of stitching there it's going to make that process harder so and I'm not about making things harder so let's go under the machine if I spin you around a little bit let's see if I can get you in a wee bit closer yeah sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't right so I've got this marked out so I'm going to stitch that first one the thing that I do need to know though really is how long this is going to be just to make sure because I might need to add another bridging stitch so before I do that let's stitch it out once and then we can just see how we're going because oh I've gone right down on the slow speed that's no good to anybody we'll be here all day and you can see as it's stitching them out three there we go I've stopped it on three deliberately because I want to see how long that is and just check up against my what I'm doing. Yep, that's perfect because I don't necessarily want it to go right into the middle. If you did, you'd probably need an extra bridging stitch on there. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to run it down to the end and I'm going to put in a lock stitch. You might not have seen what I did there because I'm too far over let me show you again I've gone all the way down and I've added in a lock stitch and that means that every time I do this it's going to finish off at the end so I'm not worrying about the stitching carrying on because I wasn't paying attention because that's the kind of thing that I would do so back under here and we go I've done it in a bright blue so hopefully you can see so I'm going to stitch that out and because I've now got that lock stitch in there it's going to finish that whole pattern and then stop there we go so I've got one of my arms done so I'm just going to carry on and what I've done on some of the snowflakes is I've done the sort of four you know the north south east west if you like points with one particular stitch and then I've gone in and changed the ones in between so for this one for example I've used that stitch there and then in between I've changed it out so it, you can see the amount of variety that you can get with this and on the front page of this I put a picture of a mini quilt I made for Christmas where I've actually done all the snowflakes on the actual quilt itself. I didn't do it through the backing, I've actually just done it through the top of the quilt and into the batting rather than all the way through, partly because when you look underneath you've got a lot going on under here so um, sometimes I think it's easier to do all that fancy stitching so you don't have to worry about it looking fabulous on the underneath which um, most quilters 
I'm normally worrying about. Don't look at the back. That's what the cry normally is, although I have to say I always look at the back. Right, so that's my first four. So I am going to go back in and I'm going to change this out so I can just delete those. I'm going to lose one of my bridging stitches and then I'm going to put in, let's see, where should we go now? Um, ooh, how about something like that? There we go. What you can also do as well on these machines, if I go back to this one, I've got two coming down. I'm going to go back to the second one. Bear in mind, I'm on a nine millimeter stitch width here. So what I can do, and you can see it changing it on the screen, I can take the width of that one down. And then I can go down and do the same with this one as well, so that I can have them graduating in size. So I've gone from a nine to a seven to, let's make it even, to a six. So I've now got these different shapes going on and don't forget that you can do this with these stitches because it just makes them more interesting and it makes them less um, prescribed if that's the right word I think sometimes people look at embroidery stitches and think oh what's you know what's the point of those don't forget I've still got my lock stitch on here so it's just going to stitch each one of these out quite happily and then stop but yeah don't don't think that you just have to use those stitches in the way they look um, just by changing with any of the stitches on your sewing machine by changing the width and the length um, you can completely change the way those stitches look and if you've got all these fancy stitches then why not this is a replacement after all for hand embroidery and if you don't have an embroidery option um, on your machine then all these stitches can easily turn it into something very similar but you're in control so so there we go one more to do and then I can show you the finished one I will do another one in a second because what I also wanted to show you while we're on topic if you like is the elongation on some machines, elongation will again be a separate button, but it might just be um, an E, obviously, for elongation. And what that will do, it works on the satin stitches to um, lengthen them without actually affecting the stitching because when you work with those satin stitches, you can lengthen them yourself. But what will happen is it will just stretch the stitch out. Most satin stitches are obviously a zigzag stitch. So it's just going to make that zigzag wider. So you end up with these bigger gaps, if you like. So here's one. Looks really cute. So let's just have a quick look at the um, options for satin stitches so if I go on to my satin stitch here and I go with something because this is going to look fairly snowflakey isn't it if I go back into that and I alter because on here my stitch length is saying 0.4 which is what's making it a satin stitch it's just closed it right up so that zigzag is really really tight if I take it up look you can see it's going to spread that stitch out so rather than do that if I drop this screen down, I'm getting this is my elongation option and I can do it up to five times the length and look how long that is. And I'm just going to show you on a little piece of felt. They do look quite nice stitched out on felt actually um, and for Christmas decorations, ideal. But like I say, there is a picture on the front of it actually these stitched onto fabrics as well so if I stitch that out you'll see it will go on and on and on and on so this is five times bear in mind 
but it's still really really tight and then it's just going to do a bridging stitch because I put those in and then the locker is still going still, just you know talk amongst yourselves here we go any minute now <laughs> we're going to get to the end there we go okay so I mean look at him okay so that's pretty darn long but you can see there's no loss of definition in that stitching so things like this again for snowflakes for decoration um put a star at the top and you've just got a really nice skinny christmas tree things like this just playing around with it but like i say the key ones to remember are the stitch memory so on this particular screen you're looking at this so changing it out from all one pattern to just the single one and the elongation which comes when you drop that screen down and you get it in here you'll only get those on certain stitches like I say it's it's the satin stitches um, and the other thing was the mirroring okay so again I've got mirroring here on here but it's only going from side to side which on this one doesn't affect it but if I take that out and put that one in if I mirror it oh hang on go back underneath it so it's red there we go if I mirror it can you see it's just changed the side so obviously things that are just one side will work so if I delete that and I go in with this little crescent moon for example and then I go in again with a crescent moon and I turn it come back underneath and turn it there you go so you can see how you can really chop and change these stitches to get something that works for what you want to do so hope that was helpful um, and I will be posting a few more videos, especially about using this particular screen on those machines, because I think that would be quite helpful. Thank you.